taller than me. Why? Because I need to feel taller than you. Hey guys, uh, in this video we're going to show you some tips and tricks on how you can shoot better fall caps. And who better to show you that than my friend and filmer Danny. He used to work in uh, Kedrona for them and GoPro as a filmer. So he have learned quite a few tips and tricks. I have learned a few tips and tricks. Yeah, so we're going to go through six things that I like to keep in mind when filming follow cams with a GoPro or whatever kind of camera really. It doesn't, it's not really camera specific. Yeah. It's not really camera specific. It's not really camera specific. So Jens, can you go and operate this camera? Uh, for, uh, right. I do have insurance. So the first thing I like to think of uh, when I'm out filming follow cams with Jens or whoever else is being familiar with the terrain. There's a lot of dangerous stuff to crash into like rails or to fall off like jumps. Um, so it's really important if I'm gonna be following Jens over the jumps that I've skied over the jumps if I'm following him in the air before. Or over the rollers if I'm following over the rollers before I'm filming him so that I know how they feel, so that I know I've got the right speed and I'm not gonna hurt myself and break my equipment. No matter how many precautions you take, it can be dangerous, especially if you want to be in front of the rider. Dolly! Oh, that was so close. I'm so sorry. That was my fault. <laughs> Let's hug really it out. Sorry, I'm terrified there. The second thing to think about is what your subject is doing. This is one of the most important things to bear in mind when trying to film people and make it look good. For basic tricks especially, or more of the styly tricks, where you're really trying to focus on a really good grab or a sweet tweak or a good press on a rail or something, the angle that you shoot them from will make all the difference. If I've got Jens here sliding a rail, if he wants to slide it right foot forward, then I should probably be on his left hand side so that I get his face and his chest and his knees. No one wants to see Jens's butt that much. I'll ask Jens what he's gonna do each run so that I can try and figure out what angle the trick is gonna look best from so I nail the shot. Yeah, what tricks are you gonna do now? I wanna be in line with you on the jumps, so but on your the last hit- on... What, from the right hand side or from the left? left. From the left. I'm fine with that. On, on your last trick, even though it's a switch left seven, you go so far to the right. Yeah, I'll, I'll stay on that side. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And uh, the second jump, the five, you normally kind of drift left, which is fine, I'll jump left. And the first one, the 360, you go pretty straight. All right, cool. So let's, let's fire this up. Get close. This is especially important with a GoPro or another action camera or anything with a wide lens because as soon as you get a little bit further away from people, they start to look really small in the frame. To make the footage look really good, it's important to have your rider really filling the frame. Sometimes too close is better than too far away. It's good to check out the footage on the back of the camera if you can to see how far away you want to be and try and maintain that distance while you're doing your follow cams. Um, if you need a little bit of extra speed, then you can drop first so that you can make sure that they really fill the frame because shots from far away look rubbish. It's always good to review your footage in between runs if you can to see what was good and what could be better. Looks pretty good. Nice and close. And then this side, I wanted to get the grab really good. Yeah, maybe a little bit too close on the landing. Hey Jens, nice skiing. Good job. Thanks, Matt. If you want to use slow motion, it's especially important to get close. If you slow the footage down and the rider is tiny in the frame, you barely see any movement. But if you're nice and close, you see everything so clearly. Check out this shot of Jens getting his grab shot nice and close. It looks amazing. When we're filming follow cams, a lot of the vibrations from the snow and from skiing or riding fast come up through the body into your arm holding the camera. So you end up with footage like this and it looks crap. I'll show you my best attempt at doing some handheld follow cams. And despite experience filming with follow cams, they still look pretty average. Mm -hmm. 
what you can do to stabilize your footage is get a pole. It doesn't have to be this one. This one is actually more of a tripod kind of thing. It's not necessarily made for follow cams, but it's still better than the handheld one. If you can move the camera away from your hand, you're gonna uh, dampen some of the vibrations from your skiing um, and that'll stabilize your footage. One of these is okay. You can use some duct tape and strap it to your ski pole. If you can get your hands on a longer pole, that's already gonna make your footage so much better than just holding it in your hand. The longer the pole is, the better, because it isolates the little shakes from your hand and turns them into more smooth movements. So. If you can get your hands on a longer pole, a long stiff one is good. If it's really bendy, then it's not really gonna work, but a nice stiff one like this. <laughs> Keep yourself nice and balanced. The same things that Jens talks about a lot when taking off for a trick. You wanna be down nice and low, balanced, really strong core. Hold the thing with both hands and keep your arms and your chest quite tight so that it's all solid and all the little movements don't move into your core and to your arms. Luckily, in the last couple of years, gimbals have become mainstream technology. GoPro makes their own one. This one's called the Karma. It's kind of covered in snow at the moment, but I think that that'll be all right. They stabilize the footage and they turn your shaky handheld stuff into really smooth, nice looking footage. That doesn't mean that your footage is gonna look professional straight away. You still have to get used to it. You would do well to learn how quickly it pans, learn the different modes, learn even how long the battery is gonna last, that kind of stuff. The ultimate way to get your shots nice, stabilized, super smooth, is to use something like a gimbal on a long pole. That is wonderful. I think we should tape this together. So now you've hopefully stabilized your footage, um, it's time to really get creative. The really common standard angle is the one that's behind, kind of off to the side. You're just basically trying to keep up with the rider and film them, but we've seen it a lot and it kind of gets boring. Um, so we're gonna play around today and try and get some slightly different angles. We'll try filming follows straight behind over the jumps, right next door over the jump, so I might even go over the jumps in front of Jens and do like a fishing rod type thing. We'll see, I don't really know what we're gonna do. If you can get in front of them and film back up the hill, um, you know, you can get their face, you can see the fear in Jens' eyes when he's about to crash, that's really awesome. Consider the light. Most of these cameras do all the exposure adjustments automatically. Um, which is great, but it just means that if I point the GoPro into the sun, it's going to automatically make the footage way darker. Otherwise, it's going to be overexposed. So Jens is going to be almost a silhouette. Compared with if I was filming him backlit by the sun, which means the sun is behind me and then I'm filming Jens, uh, he's going to be really well lit and the footage is going to generally look much brighter, which is good. It's up to you. Both of those situations, backlit or silhouetted, can be really good, but it's good to think about what you actually want um, so that you don't miss some of the action by accident, for example, by having them silhouetted and you miss the grab or whatever. Another important thing when thinking about the light um, is to bear in mind what your shadow is doing. It's really distracting if you get your own shadow in the frame. Um, I've got a feeling we might run into trouble with that when I'm filming in front of him. Okay, some settings to think of. Uh, cameras will obviously vary and you might not have exactly the same settings available as I do here, but I've got a GoPro 6 Black, I think. 6 Black? Black 6? It's a 6. Um, and there's just a couple of settings that I like to make sure that I nail to get the best out of it. So the first one, uh, if you go into these settings, is ProTune. ProTune I always have turned on because it records more information. I like to go in and edit the footage and change the colors and stuff a little bit um, to make it look a little bit better. So when it says color, I choose GoPro, not flat. 
if you choose flat, you really got to know what you're doing and you probably won't be watching this video. So I'd stick to GoPro color at the moment. White balance, if it's sunny, I stick to 5,500 Kelvin. I'm going to be shooting in two different settings. We've got two cameras here. One of them I'm going to be filming at 2.7K resolution at 120 frames per second. The only field of view option there is wide, and that's really good. I think that works well. Um, and I'm also going to try out the 240 frames a second mode. So that will give me a maximum resolution of 1080, which, to be honest, is absolutely fine. Um, these cameras are really great for slow-mo. That's one of the best things that they do. You should be able to choose between a few different resolutions, mostly, and never go beneath 1080p is my recommendation. 720 is really quite outdated now, and it looks rubbish. So stick to 1080. If you want slow-mo, choose 1080 and the highest frame rate you can do. Um, if you've got one of these, try out 120 frames a second at 2.7K. I really like that. I think it looks great and it gives you a little bit of room to zoom in and post a little bit. Oh, look at this switch. Oh, 180, like over tweak, yeah. over, over shift. I like that. Hey guys, did you enjoy it? Leave a comment if you did. Maybe we'll make more stuff like this. Did you like making this? I, ask me again once I finish editing it. <laughs> it was, today was really fun, but I'm not sure I'm gonna like the sound of my own voice so much by the time I finish this video. It's oh. totally normal. All filmers look out of control in the air. It's true, we all are. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a really fun day, thank you. Yep. If anyone found this useful, I would love to see some of your work. Yeah, maybe tag Stomp in tutorials in yeah. your next Instagram edit. And We'll check it out, maybe we'll repost it if, we, if it's nice or if it's funny. Oh, one thing uh, we remembered, I forgot to say earlier on, uh, always have duct tape with you. Always duct tape. And not medical or, or electrical. electrical. <laughs> always have duct tape with you. Right, you do your Swedish thing. Ja, tack ska ni ha, ses nästa gång. Tack så mycket. Tack så mycket. I'm tack killing right. it with Swedish.